Hi folks, it's Andy. Welcome to this week's Kendo Rant. Uh, I'm looking at the wrong camera. There it is. <laughs> um, <clears throat> uh, this is the first Kendo Rant of 2020, so Happy New Year. Um, I hope you had a great year, 2019. Uh, thank you very much for all the support uh, and love you've given me over 2019. It was a fantastic year for us, uh, both on the Kendo Show and uh, at Kendo Star. Uh, I did put a message out at the end of the year, actually, so go and watch that. If you haven't seen it, it's on this channel. Um, as you've noticed, we are uh, back to 2018. Uh, Kendo and all around the, the, when I first started doing it, I did it like this, very old school. Um, I'm just really busy at the minute. I haven't had a chance to uh, set the studio up and everything. Um, so I'm just recording this at my desk because I do want to get it out. I did miss last week's Kendall rant. Uh, <clears throat> Because I, I am a little bit poorly, as you'll probably notice, I will be coughing a little bit through this, but I'll try and try and hold off on it. Um, I am getting better. Um, and yeah, uh, sorry about that. Uh, let's get right into these questions. Before we do, though, don't forget um, to like, share, subscribe, all that sort of thing. Uh, if these videos do uh, provide you any value whatsoever, uh, if you do like them, don't just sit and watch them for free. Do do that, but don't just do that. Don't forget to support us by shopping at kendostar.com. Uh, uh, that's that's my website, of course, that sells fantastic, amazing, wonderful kendo equipment, the best stuff in the galaxy. So go and shop at kendostar.com to support the channel. Right, first one. This is not so much a question, um, rather a statement in relation to the video that I did at Christmas, the, the, the Christmas Kendall rant, uh, where I said uh, there's no use to mindless repetition at all. <clears throat> uh, and that was in reference to a question that was about like, um, is you know, it, it, just, just going through mindless repetition. And I said that there is no use to mindlessly repeating practice over and over again. Uh, and the comment says, oh, our, oh, how I wish there were more senseis that would think that way. Thank you for saying it out loud. Um, right. The reason I want to pick up on this is I just want to make sure that I'm clear on what I was saying last time, because I don't want you to misunderstand this, right? There's a lot of repetition in Kendall. You have to repeat, uh, the basics over and over and over and over again, right? But there's a difference between repetition that's active where you're trying to improve, trying to get better and where you're just mindlessly going through the motions, right? And that's nothing to do with the sensei, all right? So that's why I want to pick up on this because you said you wish there's more sensei that think like that. Look, if the sensei is making you do the same exercise every week, that's not necessarily a bad thing. It just means you know, it's not that you shouldn't practice the same exercise every week um, or the same techniques or the same ash sabaki, that sort of thing. It means you should, um, you should, when you do repeat uh, those sort of practice methods, you have to do it with the, with the uh, willingness to improve, with the motivation to improve, and you can't just mindlessly go through the motions. Okay. So that's, that's what I want to be clear on that look. So even if you think that your sensei is just making you repeat the same things. Uh, if you do it with your full heart and soul, you'll still get better. <coughs> okay, next one. Excuse me for coughing again. Uh, Andy, may I ask you, uh, when I put on my men, um, I feel like all the weight bearing on is bearing on my chin uh, to hold up the men. Uh, is this a case of bad fitting men? My men is not the best, and I promise I'll get a good quality one from Kendo Star next time. Well, um, this is why I say, you know, uh, if if, <laughs> if you can't afford to buy it twice, buy it the first time at Kendo Star. But um, <laughs> uh, it might be um, it might be that the the men isn't great quality the way it's fitting you. Uh, it might be that it's not fitting very well. Um, it might be that you didn't measure brilliantly. Uh, it might be uh, any of those things, um, or it could be that you're just not used to tying it properly yet, or um, you haven't quite got the knack of how you're tying it. It's difficult for me to say without seeing it, uh, but I think you need to talk to your teacher and see if they can give you advice about if you're tying it properly or if indeed it is too big. Uh, hi Andy, I've been watching uh, for a while now and I was afraid to ask, uh, but you cleared the age thing. Uh, I'll, I'll start uh, next year, but I don't want to be an obstacle or slow the class down or look like I have rigor mortis. Uh, so what do you suggest I could be doing in the few months ahead of uh, the start of the Kendo year in terms of physical strength and agility uh, and in terms of mindset? Uh, so if you've covered it already, um, if you could tell me as I look for it. Okay, so uh, essentially, I guess the question is, is um, you want to start Kendo. Uh, you're going to start it this year, I guess. Um, and you want to know what you can do to prepare for it. There isn't a massive amount, okay? You don't need to necessarily... Um, specifically prepare uh, for Kendo. Obviously, if you're fit and in shape, that will definitely help you. Um, so anything you can do, you know, just in terms of general exercise and fitness will definitely help you out. Um, and otherwise, uh, I just like watch the Kendo show. <laughs> uh, of course, I would say that, but 
<coughs> if you watch, just watch some videos of Kendo on YouTube, get an idea of what it sort of looks like and stuff like that. And then go into it with an open mind and I'm sure you'll be fine. Don't think that you'll be uh, holding it up uh, or slowing the class down at all. It, 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 it don't work like that. You could take the fittest, youngest person ever, put them in there um, and they'll still struggle with it on day one. So don't don't worry about that. Uh, next, uh, what do you think about performance enhancing drugs in Kendo? Uh, are competitions drug tested and do people use steroids in Kendo? Uh, what do I think about performance enhancing drugs? I think they're bad uh, and that you shouldn't use them. Uh, competitions are drug tested, uh, certainly at the highest levels. I know that the World Championships, the World Kendo Championships um, is uh, does have a, a drugs testing policy and it does happen. It does occur um, in the uh, World Combat Games, uh, which is an, another um, international uh, tournament um, that, that I've been personally involved in. Uh, there was also active drug uh, testing there as well, both random uh, and for people that were uh, placing in the medals. Um, so yeah, it definitely is something that happens. Uh, I've never heard of anyone using performance enhancing, enhancing drugs or steroids or any of that sort of rubbish uh, in Kendall. Uh, but if they did, um, then they shouldn't. Um, I, they, you know, uh, it, it's not cool. Don't do that. Uh, next, uh, I'm very new at Kendo, so excuse me uh, if my uh, for my question. Don't be silly, it's fine. Uh, and maybe future questions, if it sounds silly. It doesn't sound silly, don't worry. Uh, I'd like to know when to use Fumikomi. Uh, do I need to do it with any and every strike in all circumstances? In other words, uh, is it like uh, a must that a strike isn't valid without it? Or do I only need to do it when the opponent is out of reach? Okay, for the most part, except for Subudi, for Subudi, which is the warm-up, not warm up, but the sort of practice swings that you do at the beginning of, of practice often, um, or where you're hitting the thin air using suriyashi. Um, when you're actually engaging in combat in kendo, uh, for the most part, um, especially as you're quite new, let's say yes, you have to do it all the time for the strike to be valid. It's not strictly true, but for the time being, let's say that it is. <coughs> Next, uh, let's have a look. Um, I have a bad blister on the ball of my left foot. Is it something I'm doing wrong? Uh, please suggest a tape that I can use to cover it. Uh, I'm thinking of using KT tapes. Um, so the kind of tape that I would use to cover blisters and stuff up on my feet, I usually use zinc oxide tape. Uh, it's something you can usually pick up off uh, like Amazon, something like that. Um, in terms of what you're doing wrong, the likelihood is, is that your feet aren't perfectly straight like this. You've probably got your left, left foot turned out this way. So when you're trying to launch off, you're twisting your foot you're twisting your foot like that and you're putting a lot of friction on the ball of your left foot and that's why you're developing a blister. Um, that's what I think anyway. That's what normally tends to happen. Um, right, next set of questions. They're all questions that have come from um, comments on YouTube. Now I'm going to go over to the Kendo Show early access group. If you haven't joined this group, there's a link in the description down below. It's totally free to join. Um, it's a great place to post your questions uh, because it's a great community of uh, Kendo people from all around the world of all different levels. Uh, there's people up to seventh dan in there um, from all over the world. Uh, so you don't just get my opinion here on this this uh, this show, uh, but you actually uh, do get input from uh, other people as well. It, it's turned into a really beautiful forum uh, for uh, Kendo discussion. Uh, so first one from in there. Is there anything that someone's taught you later in your Kendo life that you would... Uh, that you think would have been very useful to know earlier on, or even from the start. Uh, yet loads of things, loads and loads of things. Uh, <coughs> there's there's a few things, I guess. Uh, but one of the th one things. Let me let me leave you with a, probably the biggest one. I was third dan before I knew how to pr correctly tie my borger. Okay, I was third dan before I knew how to correctly tie my borger. Um, and by that specifically, I didn't know how to tie a proper. Uh, your call must be the uh, horizontal knot. I'm pretty sure I've shown that in a video. Um, so yeah, uh, make sure you learn how to do that right from the start. Uh, yeah, that's that's certainly something. Uh, next one. Um, some senseis uh, say that kendo back in the old days were different. Uh, we're not talking about like Musashi, but like the Showa uh, post-war period uh, when the rules weren't different. Um, let, let's insert a word, weren't that different because they were a bit different. But yeah, when, the, when it was kendo, yeah, not kenjutsu. Uh, they say kenjis back then had true individual character in their kendo. Uh, they say it's no longer like that these days. It's all very similar. Uh, would you agree? Do the Showa or even... Uh, H0, I guess you mean the, like, uh, Heisei Gannen, the uh, 
beginning of the Heisei era. Kendo footages inspire you. So, yeah, I mean, it clearly is different. If you go and look at, like, the Showa era, Showa is the pre not the previous. We're now in Neiwa, uh, the, 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 the period before last in, in the Japanese sort of calendar um, under the emperor uh, sort of Showa. Uh, basically... Um, yeah, if you look at any of those sort of uh, videos from like the the seventies um, or, or earlier, um, even the eighties and earlier, um, then basically, uh, yeah, of course, Kendall looks very different. It looks different, um, and it. I, I don't know if it's better or worse. I wouldn't say either. It's just different. I think Kendall's evolving all the time, um, and I, I really quite enjoy watching old footage of Kendall um stuff that's like from the early 90s from the the 80s and even the sort of 70s uh, I find it really really interesting um I think the Kendall now does seem to be a little bit more streamlined uh, in a lot of ways it's kind of simpler um and I think it's a lot more refined in lots of ways However, in terms of the way you said that uh, people say that they had true individual character, I think that's really interesting too as well. Yeah, because there is there does seem to be a little bit of variance between the, the players more from those days, perhaps. I don't know, though, if I really think about it. One thing I would say, though, is the 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 people from that, those days, um, I'm not sure we're going to see those that that sort of spirit come through again because the, the sort of training that those guys went through um it doesn't really exist now um because of course training is is different too i'm not saying that's for the better or for the worse but you know um some of the senseis of the the previous generation of senseis um that aren't aren't really with us anymore um i don't think we're going to see another generation like that because they you know the the current it, well, people don't go through go don't go through um, the kind of history that they did. Anyway, I'm uh, going off track there. Uh, next question says Kendo politics and hypocrisy. Yeah, I'm not touching that. <laughs> uh, next one. Uh, hi Andy, uh, we're using some Kendo uh, using some Kendo Star Burger uh, to our utmost uh, satisfaction. Thank you very much. Uh, nevertheless, today I have a question about um, an item you're not selling. Um, members of our club save some money and we'd like to buy a sharp shinken to cut some makiwara. Can you advise us where to buy uh, a simple, reliable sword for these purposes? Uh, we've only got a low budget around 500 euros. Uh, is a shinken correct term for this case? Uh, shinken means any sword that's real and could actually cut something. So yeah, it would be uh, it would be uh, appropriate for that specific case. Uh, I can't advise you where to buy buy one though, and I I I, I don't know enough about it, uh, and I don't um, I don't want to advise you something uh, about something such as. Uh, uh, you know something as dangerous as that and uh, next uh, uh, the guidelines for shiaisha state shaking hands or other physical acts of encouragement during uh, such as tapping each other's door should be avoided um, as the previous shiaisha is exiting the next shiai uh, and the next shiaisha enters the shiai door uh, the angriest i've ever seen a japanese sensei in the uk was when two of his students used a fist bump when coming off and going onto the shiai door uh, for these two reasons i've always i always grimace inside when i see fist bumps at tight guy uh, and it's, it's someone that is likely to listen to me i advise them not to do it uh, i'd be interested to hear your thoughts on this so what you're talking about is after the shiai it's it's usually in a team shiai you come off the shiai joe you turn and you kind of bump fists together with the next player as they go on <coughs> uh yeah it, it's super common um it's super common in japan too lots of kids do it in japan and i've seen much more egregious things as well rather than just a fist bump um uh it, it it you're not supposed to do it like you say it's written in the rules you shouldn't do it now there's no there's no penalty for doing so so you know it's not necessarily i keep looking at the wrong camera so sorry <laughs> um uh there's no penalty for doing so um as far as i'm aware but but it, it's not cool it's not good etiquette um it's best not to all right so my thoughts are uh best to avoid doing that um i wouldn't encourage it something i used to do myself in the, when i was younger um it, it, it's all this stuff as well like you're not it's interesting what's written in the in it actually um you're not supposed to do stuff like uh something that i see a lot in the West, um, in the West, I say, I mean, in Europe, I don't have that much experience everywhere else, but in Europe, um, since coming back from Japan is like after Team Shy, uh, or even at the start of Team Shy, when people do the um, Sogoni Day with the uh, with the team as a day, people like clapping on the Shiai Joe, like that's really, 
that 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 I have never seen that in Japan. Um, I'm not, it probably happens, but you, you're not supposed to do that. Uh, you're not supposed to bow to the referees either. Um, but it, it's not that uncommon. But he does say uh, in the book, don't do it. Uh, next one, uh, hi Andy. When you do uh, a kaiushi or suriage against a kote strike, is it better to use the inside or the outside of the shinai? Well, for the most part, depending on which side of the shinai you use, that will dictate which kind of waza it is. If you're using the <coughs> excuse me, if you're using the uh, omote side, so that's the inside this way, as the shinai this way. If you're using this way, and you use you receive on on the omote side, and you stay on the omote side as you strike, that's suriage, right? Uh, if you receive on the omote side, I'm messing my hair up. <laughs> uh, if you re receive on the omote side and then return on the opposite side this way, this is kaishiwaza. Okay. If you receive on the ura side, that's on the outside of shinai, and stay on the outside as you strike, that's suriage. And if you receive on the ura side, this say this side, and strike on the other side of the opponent shinai, um, that's generally kaishiwaza. <clears throat> Neither is better or worse. It depends on the situation. It depends on the opponent. Uh, next one. Uh, my federation just introduced the Nikyu rank. Uh, so that's second Q. Uh, to pass, students must perform the Bokuto Nioro Kihonwaza Keiko Hall. Um, what are your thoughts on this? Uh, I'm a bit torn on it. I'm not I'm not a massive fan of the Bokuto Nioro Kihonwaza Keiko Hall. Um, I believe it exists um, to help people who don't do kendo teach kendo to people that also don't do, don't do kendo. Um, but it has be become part of the kendo syllabus in Japan too. You now have to do it in Japan for ikkyu. Uh, it's not a bad thing for kids, I guess, to get them used to the day hall for kata. Um, and I, I'm not dead against the idea of using it in lower gradings like nikkyu again. So you get mainly um, so that you can get used to uh, the deishiki, and the so the actual the, the way of doing the day and the format uh, for when you actually do the 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 Nihon Kendo Kata. Uh, right. <clears throat> so this is similar. This is hello. Uh, I'm I'm wondering why there are they are mandating the new Kata sets for the Q ranks. Uh, I've come from uh, the Kumdo side of things uh, initially, and we were inundated with a wide variety of techniques that were supposedly better and made Kumdo more of a martial art, less of a sport. Uh, in reality, it simply added more techniques that took us away um, from the core of what makes uh, Kendo, Kumdo great. If we wanted Kenjutsu, we would be doing Kenjutsu. Uh, my dojo mates were planning on testing for Ikkyu this summer and now are very discouraged about the added burden since all tests require us to travel 8 or more hours, sometimes 12 hours, and this is very frustrating for us trying to promote and grow Kendo. Uh, I'm not sure what you mean by like the new kata sets. If the new kata sets is the Bokuto ni Yoru Kiyomaza Keiko Ho, that's nothing like Kenjutsu. It's like just like Kendo. Um, so if you believe that those the kata should be more like Kendo, then you'd be probably more inclined to do those. Um, the not new kata sets, the actual kata, the Nihon Kendo kata, uh, they are derived from Kenjutsu, um, but they are very relevant to the study of Kendo um, and they're an important part of its history as well. Um, so like I say, I'm not um, I'm, I'm not really that bothered about the Kihon Waza Keiko Ho. Um, and I, I'm not, it doesn't bother me the way I can see an argument for and against the idea of introducing them uh, in lower level gradings. But if you, if you know, if you're talking about the Nihon Kendo Kata, it's an essential part of uh, the study of Kendo, and it is very important to to check if people are indeed uh, uh, using this part of uh, Kendo practice uh, in their um, in their daily not daily routine, but their their sort of regular routine uh, throughout their their stru uh, study of Kendo. Um, so that's why they exist on gradings. Uh, they're not that hard. Um, it, 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 they're hard to master, but they're not hard. It's not hard to learn them well enough to pass most gradings, um, especially if you're good enough to pass the Shinai section. Um, then you should be good enough to learn the Kata well enough to pass the grading, um, frankly. Uh, next, okay. Uh, I've read a few comments in response to questions regarding training practices that can be aimed at children. The response always seems to be a little lukewarm, and invariably someone will reply, Kendo is not supposed to be fun. Of course, Kendo requires a certain amount of discipline, but does that exclude fun 
whilst training. Uh, when is the tra- what is the traditional view on this and how does that translate to modern or Western training? Thanks in advance. So I actually re- replied to this as well, because the person that's often saying Kendo is not supposed to be fun is me. Um, <clears throat> and that's that's because, look, OK, <clears throat> this is where it becomes very difficult. And it, it is a very I think there is a, uh, a difficult uh, obstacle to overcome um, when you are um, teaching Kendo to children um certainly outside of japan um but i you know i mean certainly in europe uh because there's a very different uh cultural um approach shall we say um kendo is does not exist to be entertainment all right that is a fact um it wasn't devised to be entertaining uh, it wasn't devised to provide fun or stress relief from a busy work schedule um, or, uh, you know, a bit of um, enjoyment at the weekends um, or a, a replacement for something like uh, football or um, tennis. OK, um, that's that's just a fact. OK, that's in terms of what it's intended for. Um, the Zenken then, the All Japan Kendo Federation, have written specifically that Kendo is... Um, the pursuit of developing the uh, human character, developing yourself as a person through the study uh, of the uh, application of the principles of the Japanese sword. Uh, And there's a big paragraph of how that's supposed to be. And none of that says uh, to have a good time, to enjoy it um, or have fun. That doesn't mean that... It can't be fun. Sometimes kendo is fun. Sometimes I have fun doing kendo. Um, what I'm saying is it's not supposed to be there for having fun. It doesn't exist as a, as a form of entertainment. And especially for children, uh, and you're asking about the traditional view on this, um, in Japan, which is where kendo is from, um, kendo is an extension of education for children. All right. Uh, it's there to teach them manners to teach them self-discipline, to teach them uh, concepts such as um, how to handle their emotions, even when they're in uh, situations that that could be very challenging. Uh, For example, when um, they just lost a match they wanted to win, or if uh, they are under a lot of pressure from their teacher, um, or they are suffering from their difficult practice to carry on and strive, uh, and to to push through it, uh, those sort of things are what Kendo is intended to give children. Uh, none of these things are supposed to be entertaining. They're supposed to be there to uh, increase um, sort of positive positive aspects in the in the in the child's character as it grows to be a human being. Um, that, however, uh, is a kind of thing that's understood by Japanese parents, and that's one of the reasons that for the most part. Um, lots of parents put their kids into Kendo 4. They don't put the kids into Kendo to enjoy it or to have fun. Um, They put them in Kendo so that they can benefit in those ways. Uh, Sometimes they put them in for other reasons as well. Maybe they want them to be successful uh, in matches. They want them to be strong uh, players or competitors. Uh, And of course, that also comes with a lot of hard work, a lot of difficulty, uh, and not a lot of fun. Uh, Kendo training in in its traditional sense doesn't involve things like fun and games. Um, So, in fact, if, you know, in lots of dojos, serious, serious dojos, um, there is, uh, you know, if a a kid said after practice, uh, oh, Kendo was fun today, in the sense they heard them, they'd probably get in a lot of trouble. Um, for not taking it seriously. So um, now, look, uh, this is the thing: is it, it that isn't to say that it can't be fun, or you can't make it fun, uh, or you can't add games and stuff like that. But the question is: is then can you still achieve the things that it's supposed to achieve? Uh, does it still remain Kendo if you're doing that? Um, I'm not sure. Uh, if I'm honest, um, if I was to turn Kendo into sort of entertaining games for kids for the sake of their entertainment so that they enjoy it, keep coming uh, and and enjoy Kendo uh, in the hope that perhaps when they get older, they'll they'll learn or hope to realize that 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 Kendo isn't fun and games. 
Um, I'm not sure if that's the right way to go. I'm not saying it's not. I'm just not sure if it is the right way to go. Uh, I feel like that's that's taking it away from. <coughs> it's not Kendall uh, in that respect. Um, but at the same time, I do think it's important to keep kids interested. Um, the difficulty thing, the difficult thing is again, like I say, is the approach from the parents. Um, I think lots of parents want their kids to enjoy doing kendo. They want them to uh, say that they want to go to kendo, uh, and they want them to say they want to continue going to kendo. Uh, because if they say they want to stop going to kendo, then they'll allow them to stop, uh, which is fine. You know, that's totally cool and everything. That's normal. Uh, by all, uh, you know, uh, wants and purposes. But uh, in the traditional sense, uh, in in kendo, uh, in lots of, let's say, serious dojos in Japan, because there's places in Japan too that are very casual. They don't mind so much about that sort of thing. But of course, they don't go on to win any tournaments. They don't go on to produce the, uh, the, the future top players of kendo for the most part. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, um, if, if, if one of the kids from the serious Japanese dojo says they want to quit kendo, uh, the answer is no. <laughs> uh, from the most, for the most part, from their parents, so uh, it is very different. Anyway, uh, right, moving on. Uh, what's your opinion on Tabby? Uh, I asked the group uh, and got a few answers that got me thinking. I plan on buying a pair because of tearing the skin on the uh, joint and my big left toe uh, that I haven't been able to heal with the use of athletic tape. Uh, and I'm working to improve with footwork. Um, I think they're totally fine. Um, I think the best of those half tabby rather than the full foot ones. I'm not a massive fan of wearing the full foot socks things uh, in, in the dojo, but it's not like, I, I just don't personally like it. I mean, I'm not saying you shouldn't or something like that. There's plenty of people that do, and there's plenty of people in Japan that do as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it, you know, I wouldn't wear them all the time, but I mean, I think they're a good tool for, like you say, when you're in a situation where you've got an injury or it's, the skin's splitting or something like that, and it won't heal just with tape, put the tabby on until it starts to heal again and you can get away with using the tape. That's what I would do. Uh, next one, what do you hope to achieve this year? Uh, lots of things, um, <laughs> lots and lots of things, but let's say uh, I'd like to um, I'd like to be awarded my Denshi this year because um, it's now one year since I passed sixth dan, uh, so I'd like to be awarded the rank of Renshi. Uh, next one, uh, hi Andy, thanks for making the great videos, thank you very much for watching them. Uh, I wanted to ask about Sayu Men. When I make Sayu Men, my uh, sensei emphasizes the tip of the scar, I must aim at the middle of my body at the end of the strike. So the Tatotsubu, the Shinai lays on the left, the right side of the men of the Motodachi, uh, but the tip of the sky ends at the middle of my body. Uh, I've seen some videos of Kirikaishi where the people don't care about this, and when they strike the left side of the Motodachi men, the tip of the sky aims at the left side of their own body or even outside their body. I understand it's more natural to do it this way, but is it also correct? <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, I'm not sure if this question makes sense for you, if not, just ignore it. I'll rephrase it later. No, I totally understand. Um, right, let me get a sip of water so I before I answer you. <laughs> right, okay. Um, I know I totally understand what you're saying. What you're talking about is when you do uh, left and right sayu man. Let me just move my mic back. Uh, when you do left and right sayu man, that you're um, that's what sayu man means by the way, left and right men. When you're doing the diagonal men cuts, let me see if I can get right in front of the camera so you can see. Right. Uh, the, the left hand stays in the middle of the body, yeah? And the, the, the scar of the shinai stays in the middle of the body, this way and this way. That's because as you swing the shinai, you should be using your wrists, your wrists to change the direction of the, the cutting angle of the sword, all right? The hasuji should be changed with your wrists and not with your elbows. If you use your elbows and your shoulders to change it, that's when it comes out of sync and comes out of the middle of your body. It is wrong to do that. You should try and keep it in the middle as you uh, as much as you can. But of course, when you're doing kirikaishi at full speed, you're going quicker uh, and the other person might, might be blocking quite um, aggressively, it can be hard, but you should be trying to do that at all times, all right? Um, your, your sensei is correct in saying that, definitely. Uh, how important is competition to kendo training? Can you train in kendo without doing competition? Yes, you can train in kendo without doing competition. There's plenty of people that do that. Uh, however, uh, I recommend um, involving yourself in competition at some point in the future. Um, it, it, you know, it, it doesn't mean you have to try and be the best world champion or something like that. Uh, it just means that um, competition <coughs> in Japanese is called shiai, shiai, and it means test each other 
Okay, or oh, well, test together. Uh, it's a test of your own abilities. That's what competition is for. It's there to help you um, understand where you're, where how you're progressing in Kendo with an actual like uh, with at, with direct feedback from three um, it sort of referees uh, that will validate uh, your Kendo for you. All right, uh, it is important in that, and I think someone linked to a Kendo gamer episode where I talked about that. Uh, next one. Um, <clears throat> Okay, so this is about uh, Kirikaishi again. Um, while Kirikaishi has many aspects itself, uh, it seems very multi-layered. I tried to watch people doing that videos and try to understand what's going on. You made a video about it and I've looked at it and got a question. Uh, you step into Isoku Ito no Mai. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, your body starts to uh, move forward whilst you're ho still holding kamae and you raise your uh, shinai dufumikomi. My question is about the time uh, your body starts to fall. Um, I have also seen that uh, that done by high school students. To me, it seems and feels like doing it that way. It's easier to make the body go forward because falling is needed. Um, Okay, I'm trying to read this uh, through. Um, I'm low grade level, so I step in uh, in that position. I try to hit men, but to get moving, I must first, I move first my shinai and then my body. Uh, I would like it to be the other way around, but having a hard time pulling it off. Thanks for making this content. Okay, I think you're totally overthinking it. Don't worry about it so much, all right? When you're in doing kirikaishi, start from far distance. Yeah, step into your distance. You move your shinai first when you're doing the big men, that's fine. Move your shinai first, move forward, man, with Fumikomi, all right? Don't worry about this, like, little micro movements of the body going forward and stuff like that. I think you're totally overthinking. Don't worry too much, especially if you're just starting out in Kendo. Just try to hit with Kikentai no Ichi so that your stamp, your hit, and your shout all happens together. Uh, okay, this is the last one. Hello, Andy Sensei. I've been... Uh, uh, I have a question towards combining different kamae into one style. Have you ever seen any high-ranking sensei effectively fighting in multiple kamae? Uh, I mainly fight in Chudan, but sometimes at my dojo I make approaches towards fighting in Jordan. I notice that against taller opponents, you tend to use more force in their movements. Uh, the high angle and the speed of the katate waza uh, is, for them, harder to react to. Uh, very uh, subjective, of course. Uh, it got me thinking about training in both kamae uh, to be able to adapt on another extra layer depending on my opponent. I'm afraid that one might influence the other badly. Depends what level you're at uh, in terms of your own kendo. Uh, yes, I, I know of several high-ranking sensei that most of them, like, here's how I'd look at it. I wouldn't say that, like, they do both. Most really good Jordan sensei which are extremely rare, by the way, um, are also very good at Chudan, okay? Um, because Chudan is still the basis of Jordan, funnily enough. Um, I've not seen many people that are really good at Jordan that are rubbish at Chudan. I, I've really not seen that, um, actually. Um, now, let's bear in mind that most people don't ever start to do Jordan until their third Dan or above, right? Uh, so you must make sure that you've got a good grip of Chudan and hitting with Kentai no Ichi with both hands on your Shinai, uh, able to make good Yuko Datotsu before you start messing around in Jordan. Uh, if you do that, then yeah, uh, if you're able to do that, once you've got to sort of that level, um, which is what you need to do to get through th third Dan, by the way, um, then yeah, um, I, I don't see a problem with you doing it. Um, depends how good you want to get at it, though. If you really want to get good at Jordan, then you have to dedicate probably most of your training to doing Jordan. Um, but you would, you know, at the same time, it would be a bad idea to leave Chudan behind as well. Okay. Good. That's it. Well done. Uh, <laughs> we got there. Um, that's it. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for watching today. Um, I, I'm doing this all totally different to how I normally do. So I'm kind of all uh, up and down. I'm still coughing. Uh, ap apologies for that. And apologies for this set, like I said. Um, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, all that sort of thing. Leave me a comment down below uh, what you thought of the video. If you've got any questions for me, then leave them down there or join the Early Access group because uh, that's a great place to post them as well. Don't forget to shop at Kendo Star and I'll see you all next time. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.